Hey, what's going on? It's Ryan Stuman, President and CEO of Break Free Academy and your favorite sales blogger over at HardcoreCloser.com. Do you ever feel like you're just banging your head against the wall closing sales the hard way? Do you ever like, are you like the Navy SEAL mentality of salesperson? Like, if it ain't hard, we don't do it, right? My friend David Goggins, he always says, if it doesn't suck, we don't do it. But that's like Navy SEAL mentality. Those guys are putting themselves through the ringer. While you might be the Navy SEAL of sales, it doesn't have to be that hard. I'm going to share with you today some advanced closing strategies that will actually make sales easier for you because many people do sales the hard way, right? They, do, they, they pick up the phone. They call a bunch of strangers. They go knock on the doors of strangers. They go to networking events with poor ass people that have no way of reciprocating business and so on and so forth. I could go on forever. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to share with you some ways, some advanced closing skills to make your life easier because it's time that you stop doing sales the hard way. See, my favorite saying that I coined this a long time ago, my favorite saying in sales is he who speaks the least earns the most. And so a lot of salespeople think they got to talk their way into sales. But the truth is, if you just shut up and listen, you'll find yourself making more sales than the guy that talks because you're more likely to talk your way out of a sale than into a sale. So that's the number one advanced strategy is actually just listen. I know maybe you've heard your sales manager say, well, you got two ears and one mouth for a reason. And it's true, right? You should be listening twice as much as you talk. And so one of the things that I like to do is when people give me objections, instead of trying to talk over them, is I let them finish their objections and I agree with them. Man, I absolutely understand. But let me ask you this. If you were in this situation, would this make you feel better, right? I like to ask them questions and I like to ask them open-ended questions, which causes the light bulb to go off in their head, right? I can't talk somebody into a sale, but I can ask somebody that gives them a revolutionary thought process on their own that compels them to buy from us. You see, people buy when value exceeds price. And so when you show them the value by asking them questions and asking them how long they're willing to continue to be in the situation they're in without getting the results that they desire, it starts to build that value. It's like, dude, yeah, I have been in this situation for a long time, and this is like a zero value win for me right now. And so I want you to start thinking about that. So listen more than you talk. So you might say that's not advanced, but you'd be surprised how many people don't do it. Like knowing something and doing something is two different things. We all know that you can get on a rocket ship and go to the moon, but none of us that are watching this right now have ever been on a rocket ship and gone to the moon. Knowing something and doing something are two different things, right? So knowing to listen and actually shutting up and listening are two different things. So remember, he who speaks the least earns the most. If you take a transcript of any sales call, if the salesperson talked more than the prospect, chances are the salesperson lost the sale. Now, another thing that I like to do, I like to handle objections by asking questions because questions lead to confessions. Another thing that I like to do is I like to start the conversation off, well, well, what made you decide to reach out? What made you decide to show up on this phone call with me? What made you decide to take my phone call? Right? I want them to start telling me their story of why they even entertain me being there, having this sales conversation with them in the first part. Because if they say, ah, you know what, I got tired of you bothering me, so I figure I'd give you five minutes of my time, I know I've got a hard sale ahead of me. Right? And none of us want to do sales the hard way. What I want to do is give you some advanced strategies. So I'm going to ask them, hey, what made you decide to reach out? And if they say, well, you know, the reason why I reached out is because I'm facing X, Y, Z problem. And if I don't make it go away, I'm going to have problems with my shareholders, I'm going to have problems with my boss, I'm not going to have enough money to pay my bills or whatever the case may be. And so I start being empathetic towards them. Oh, man, that's horrible. How long have you been in this situation? You see, most people ask questions and then give multiple choice answers. How long have you been in this situation? One, two years, three years, four years, five years? Then you're like... You're locking down the mind of your prospect to have to make a choice between the, the answers that you gave them versus coming up with their own answer, which is their own version of the story. It's like, how long have you been in this situation? Well, it all started in the fifth grade when Marsha refused to kiss me, right? Like they start telling you this whole long story and you get them to talk longer, which means that you're talking less. Don't interrupt. You get them to talk less, which means that you're following the rule. He who speaks the least earns the most. Okay, so you're going to ask open-ended question. There was an interview on 2020 one night and then on 60 Minutes the next night with our friend Elon Musk. I say friend because who doesn't love that guy, right? And uh, they asked Elon Musk on the 2020 episode, they said, so what's next after Mars? Are you going to go to Uranus? Are you going to go to Saturn? And he said, uh, no, we don't plan on going to either one of those planets. And the interview took about 19 minutes and they were completely done. Well, two days later on 60 Minutes, they asked the question, so what's next after Mars? And he talked for 15 minutes just on that one question about what he had planned. Matter of fact, I was with Jeff Bezos last week and they asked Jeff Bezos, they said, you know, now that you're in the space exploration business, what are your thoughts on Mars? And he said, 
they, they didn't give him like three choices to choose from. He said, well, here's what I think about Mars. I don't think that we're actually going to Mars to put humans there. I think we're going to outsource manufacturing to Mars so that we have our plants there so that they pollute the carbon society, the, the carbon planet and the carbon atmosphere of Mars. And it saves the, the atmosphere here on Earth so that we can actually clean Earth up by outsourcing our robots and shipping and everything else to Mars. Now think about how powerful of an answer that was. But what if they just asked him, what if they just said, hey, Jeff, so what are you going to do when you get to Mars? Are you going to put people there? Are you going to run rocket ships there? Are you going to have dirt bike races there? What are you going to do, right? Like they would have loaded his lips with stuff. He's going to go, no, I'm not going to do any of that. But instead, they asked open-ended questions. So an advanced strategy is to shut your mouth. Advanced strategy number, and listen more, advanced strategy number two is to ask open-ended questions. You might, again, you might knock the simplicity of this. You might say, that's not advanced at all. But trust me, as a guy that's made eight figures in the last five years from sales, I'm telling you, these are advanced strategies because it's one thing to know something and it's another to do thing. And the third thing that I'll leave with you here today is when somebody gives you an objection, actually answer it with a question. So many people try to talk over the person who's giving them an objection. All that's going to do is cause an ego conflict. You see, if I try to argue with the prospect and tell them that they're wrong, right? If they say, well, you know, I'm not sure if that'll work for me. Oh, no, it'll definitely work for you. Then guess what? Then all of a sudden, I'm not challenging their thought process. I'm challenging their integrity. I'm challenging their intelligence. And any time that you insult somebody by challenging their intelligence, they're not going to do business with you. So listen, shut your mouth and ask questions and listen more, right? That's number one. Number two, ask open-ended questions. And number three, handle objections with questions. These are advanced closing strategies that have allowed me to make over 50,000 sales, right? In my lifetime, I've made over 50, closed over 50,000 sales because I follow these advanced strategies. And you might say, well, that's sales 101. Well, how come the folks that are watching this, we know that there's only 1% of the people that make eight figures a year. So how come the majority of the people watching this aren't making eight figures a year? It's because they know this they're just not doing it. And there's a huge gap between knowing something and actually doing something. So I challenge you on this video right now to take action, like fill that gap, pull that bridge together and take action on the things that I share with you today. And by the way, if you know that you need some kind of lead capture technology to where you can stop cold calling people, stop knocking on doors, and you have no idea how to build a website, no idea how to build a sales funnel, go over to phonesites.com. You can learn how to build a, a, an actual website that captures people's information from your phone in five minutes or less. Go over to phonesites.com. And while you're here on this channel, look around, pick out some other videos that are going to help you with your sales game. Make sure you subscribe while you're here as well. We'll catch you on the next video.